During the AAN, I'll be talking uh, about subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, management, and, and certainly uh, the focus during the session is is to um, you know raise awareness about the um, you know delayed cerebral ischemia as as um, you know it's the most common complication that we see in this disease, and, and certainly to emphasize the importance of the multifactorial nature uh, of this complication. Um, we will talk about the different pathophysiology that leads to delayed cerebral ischemia, and we will talk about the, the different management approach. Um, and then also we will review some of um, you know, the, uh, the new updates uh, regarding some of the pathophysiology um, you know, related to the disease. So, so some of the important uh, you know, pathophysiology issues to discuss is, um, is the fact that it is a multifactorial disease. And, and, and more importantly, the misconception that delayed cerebral ischemia is just simply due to vasospasm. Uh, as we will uh, discuss further, there is certainly a multitude of etiology that could, could cause the delayed cerebral ischemia. Uh, angiographic vasospasm is certainly one of those. And we're going to talk about sort of the role of microthrombi uh, in, uh, in, in causing some of those ischemia. Also talk about you know, microvascular constriction, um, disruption of the blood-brain barrier, and neuroinflammation, and also cortical spreading ischemia. I think it's sort of, as we call it, the tsunami of the brain. I think it's an under-reported phenomenon just because of the challenges in monitoring this, but, but I think they all play a role in developing, you know, ischemia post subarachnoid hemorrhage. And I think as we're thinking of therapeutic options, it's very important that we address this from all aspects of the disease. Um, and so I think that's going to be a big part of, of our discussion during the session. Looking forward to all of you attending the session and, and um, you know, listening more to what we have to say. Thank you.